it's the Army Irwin. Uh, this is just me out in the Poles house out back. Don't know where my camera crew is. It's just me and my my camera. Oh, oh my god. A wild grazing upright piano. Never seen one out in the wild. Oh, next to a Pepsi machine. Unbelievable. Oh, just sneak, sneak up on it. Army Irwin? Piano Hunter. The modern day piano originates from an instrument called the harpsichord, whose earliest written records go all the way back to the 1400s. They were important keyboard instruments in Europe at this time, but their tone was not very pleasing to the ear, and were usually only used to accompany singers or other instruments. <laughs> not until the early 1700s that harpsichord manufacturers began to realize the need for a more dynamic keyboard instrument. An Italian inventor and instruments keeper by the name of Bartolomeo Cristofoli was the first to create what we would most likely see to be the modern day piano. It used a hammer mechanism to hit the strings. He called the instrument the piano forte. The upright piano, which is what we will be specifically discussing, was invented around 1780 by a man named Johann Schmidt. It was later improved by, in 1802 by Thomas Loud. It was not until the late 18th century when this percussion instrument really took off. Particularly in Western music, where essentially every major Western composer from Mozart and beyond has played the instrument. Due to its high versatility and wide range of sound, it is a staple in many types of modern music, and orchestras all the way to solos. Back to Army Irwin, where I will show you how these magnificent creatures mm. produce their sound. When a key is hit, a lever mechanism causes a hammer to come up and strike the string, and then quickly fall back in a process called escapement, so that the string is allowed to vibrate. Now on this side, you have low frequencies or low pitches, and then on this side, when the strings are struck, they have high frequencies or high pitches. Now on its own, the piano would be much too quiet to be heard. So what occurs is when the strings vibrate, when they're hit by the hammer, the vibrations are tr uh, go through the string into the bridge. Then the bridge transfers the vibration to something called the soundboard. Now the way that the soundboard amplifies the sound is that when the vibrations from the string reach it, the soundboard resonates at whatever frequency that the string that is being played has, or the resonant frequency. This resonance then causes the air around the so soundboard, which you'll notice has a much larger surface area than the individual strings, to vibrate as well. Due to the larger surface area, more air is vibrating, therefore amplifying the sound. Now going back to why the pitches of, of the piano strings differ, first the concept of standing waves must be understood. When the hammer hits the string, a disturbance causes a vibration to be sent along the string, which is then reflected by the fixed end, and this reflection and this continuous uh, wave motion creates a standing wave pattern, as can be seen in the video. This standing wave pattern is necessary for resonance to be heard and the piano strings to produce audible sound. Now the simplest standing wave pattern that can be formed in a piano string, for example, has one note at this fixed end, we have another note at this fixed end, and then an anti-node right in the middle. This would be known as the fundamental frequency, or the first harmonic. Now when other factors of the string, such as the length, or the tension of the string are constant, the only thing that actually affects the frequency of that string would be its number of nodes. Now the fundamental frequency produces the lowest and the loudest possible sound for that particular string. Now other standing wave patterns can exist simultaneous to the fundamental frequency. These are known as overtones. For example, the first overtone would have one more node in the middle between the two fixed ends. The second overtone has two nodes in the middle between the two fixed ends, and the third overtone would have three nodes in the middle between the two fixed ends. These are also known as harmonics because they are whole number multiples of the fundamental frequency. When they do occur simultaneously, they look something like this. And now this, when this occurs, this is going to affect sound quality, which I'll get into later. In addition to all this, it's the physical properties of the strings themselves that has the largest effect on the pitch. For example, on the lower frequency side, the most notable difference in strings is their thickness, you'll notice, and their density. You'll notice that 
these strings, the much lower ones, are wrapped in a very thick copper wire, which get thinner, 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 thinner to produce higher frequencies. Now on the higher pitch range, you'll notice that they all seem to have the same diameter and made out of the same material, that steel wire. So the way that their frequencies differ is by length of the wire and the tension. In the mid range, you have longer strings and lesser tensions, but in the higher frequencies, you have more tension and shorter strings. The overall sound quality of pianos often differs. For example, if too many overtones are present at a certain pitch or frequency, that can affect the sound quality being produced. Another major factor that affects the sound quality of individual pianos is humidity. When humidity affects the tension of the strings, resonance can also be affected, causing the piano to sound out of tune. The sound quality of the piano compared to other percussion instruments varies greatly. Due to the vast range of rich harmonic pitches a single piano can produce, compared to other percussion instruments makes it a much more versatile instrument that can be used in a variety of different types of music. The piano is an instrument that has defined music in a way few other instruments have been able to do. It transcends generations, and it is an instrument whose versatility began with an Italian inventor 300 years ago who utilized the concepts of physics to create an instrument that will be used for years and years to come. Well everyone, thank you for joining me here on Army Irwin's Piano Hunter.